Okay, come on back to part two as we continue with the installation phase of this uh, basic camshaft 101 in your driveway. And uh, feel free to leave some comments. Uh, we'll see if we can't share a few more tips and tactics. So if you have some tips and tactics of your own, it'd be nice to uh, throw them in down below there. Subscribe, whatever. Just come on back. We'll call it 101. I went to open the hood of my old Chevy van and something went pop and a little rivet flew out that holds my hood prop open so I need to come up with a way to fix that part. Whatever it's going to take. I'm going to need this hood open so I have to come up with something here. Okay, we're back at it again. Just as a recap, yesterday we tore it down just far enough to get the old cam and lifters out. And we slid the new cam in and test fitted this. Well, when I say new, I mean parts that I've had laying around. Uh, the timing chain fit tightly enough. This is actually a performance chain, and the camshaft is an old RV grind, but uh, it worked well in the day, and it'll work well as well now. So, we test fitted this chain, nice and firm, and uh, for one thing, I uh, can't seem to find any Loctite around, so I've got some uh, non-hardening gasket sealer and an old decrepit tube that laying about and that should be just fine for pulling these bolts in. We're not going to put these bolts in all that tight either. We don't want to torque these things in until we feel them start stretching. If you wrench very much you can do this by hand. Get them until they're firm and then just a slight twist and you'll have it. So, what else? Okay, let's get these all of these bolts in here and then maybe it's time for a commercial break. Okay, I'll reach in here and tighten up these cam bolts. We have probably 25 30 pounds of, of torque holding these things on. All right, I'm sure that will never come off. Okay, these appear to be lined up nicely. Uh, like I said, this is a uh, kind of a, an old performance timing set. It has, like I said, it had three settings on it. And uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Might as well do that. All right, let's try to take a closer look at this crankshaft gear. You can see that there's the zero right there that's sitting right there at the 12 o'clock position. And the corresponding keyway here with a zero. So I slid it on here. That's straight up timing. And you generally this will be at about the two o'clock position and when you line this up and then you line the dot up on that gear you end up with your dowel pin pointing right at three okay so your other settings over here you see this triangle that would be four degrees advanced if you chose to use that and the corresponding uh, marker which is right in there and then down underneath here there's the square so that would be four degrees retarded if you so decided to use that, which would be some kind of a performance application, which is way beyond camshafts 101. Generally, we want to stick them in straight up like this. Everything will be fine.
The other thing I might mention is I noticed this, there seemed to be room in the back of this gear for a uh, some kind of a thrust bearing, possibly if needed. I'm not using that on this motor, but if it was if I was racing, I would be using one and a button in here. But um, these should be self-centering, and then this does line up nicely, so I expect it should be fine without having to use the thrust bearing. If anybody has another opinion on that, feel free to leave a comment on that one. We are going to try it this way. So, is it time for a commercial break yet? As if I need one. I guess I just like saying that. Alrighty then, time for more tips and tactics. You can get these lifters nowadays with a little uh, little flat in them there. Every little bit of extra oiling helps these old Chevy motors in this day and age. All right, I take a little bit of my cam and lifter lube, spread it across the face of it, and over the leading edge. That's all we need. So I've been doing that with all of my lifters. Shove them in all the holes down onto the cam, which has also been lubed up, just to be safe. These engines may be old, but they're still good old small block Chevys that have been around for a few generations and still revere to be by many as the number one engine ever made. There certainly was a lot of them. Millions. Okay, here's all the push rods. They have marks where they have been uh, working up and down, so I usually put them back into the top. And so, our next step is to shove them in there. Now, some people like to roll them along on something very flat, like a pane of glass or something like that, and check them for, make sure they're straight. Mine seem pretty straight. So, we we'll put all of the push rods in through their respective holes. And I can just chat away now because I'll probably be speeding up this section of the tape in the editing process so no one will be understanding what I'm saying anyway. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty took a great fall. Well, I think I'm going to take this one. There's a couple of them. I've got an odd deal. i got all these, these particular ones on one side of my motor. This here's got a round head on it. These all have smooth pressed in heads. Let's put that. This one over here. Yeah. Now they can't understand me unless I was to speak real slow like this. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Oh well, we're just screwing around. These ones are, well it's hard to tell. These ones I think are nice and hard and it's hard to tell where they were riding. Uh, let's see here, it looks like, da, 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 da. Well, looks like they're all like that. Alright, let's get this one in there. And then maybe we'll get down to the next tip and tactic. Then, we take and run these back onto the tops. Like so. Get them on. I still didn't take my seats out. Oh, one doesn't go. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I can't get it on. Alright. What do we do next? We shut it off. That's what we do. There we are. Okay, it looks like one of them has to be loosened up just a little more. Alright. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead, just for good measure, stick some of this lithium type grease, a little on each one, just for a little extra. Oftentimes I like to do that, especially if this stuff was new, it would be a good idea. If you're putting brand new dry parts in a motor, you want to move them up, and it will speed this part up too. Okay, ready for more tips? Or are you tired of those? It's time to adjust all of the rockers. I like to do it when the intake is off. and I can look at every lifter. But I like to get it done rather quickly. I'm working on number six now. Why? And I'll tell you that in a second. I'm getting these tightened down. I've got them almost down to zero lash. A little bit. Okay, that one's at zero now. Okay, that one's pretty much at zero. Now, if it's a performance engine, I'll probably give it a quarter turn down in. If it's a regular motor, half to three quarter turns, depends. People have their preferences. One, two, three. Well, I tell you what, these are some tough lifters. They don't move down very fast. One, two, three. But I can see them moving down in there. Now I've got this little thing here full of oil. Let's see if it'll squirt out. I don't know if it's going to work or not. People like to stick and soak them in uh, a bucket with a bunch of oil in it. It's kind of messy, but it certainly does work. So, the reason we did number six first is because the timing chain, where it is set at, the way we installed it, with the marks the way they are, actually puts number six cylinder at top dead center. And so we can do both the intake and exhaust. Now there are several others that can be done. Actually half the valves in here, if you know the sequence, can be done in this step. And when you get a chance to look down here, you can see where the lifters that are all the way down in. And about half of them will be like that. Fortunately, this is a hydraulic cam, so it's not an exact science. Main thing being, you want to get that lash pretty close to half to three quarter right in there right in there okay this just now if we look we can see here's number one and by the way the bad lifter I think was number two I think this was the bad lobe on the cam that I mentioned before okay you can see hopefully that uh, that intake is sticking up a little bit higher because number one is in the overlap position right now. The intake and exhaust is working in the four cycle engine. So that's a little higher. We wouldn't want to adjust that. Others are quite obvious. Valve is definitely open here so that gets adjusted on the second phase when we turn it 180 degrees or 360 and line up our marks again on the timing chain and then that puts number one at TDC we can do the rest of it. Okay trying to figure out which ones I should adjust in this two-stage process was a little bit tricky. I used to have this written down in a little book that I used for years which I lost years ago so I took a little guesswork and uh, did eight of them and then I rotated the engine counterclockwise 180 degrees, uh, which would mean the camshaft was rotated 360 degrees. Watching the valves open and close, as I did, to try to get an idea of which ones should have been done. And it looked like I, I got it. And uh, so now I need to do the last eight. And most of them are pretty obvious. When you see one lifter standing right up next to it, you know you're on the base circle of the camshaft. But I came up with this. Uh, as far as which ones to do, when number one is at TDC and number six is at TDC. So if uh, this, if anyone disputes this, I would say leave a comment, please, so we can make sure that this is correct. 
So essentially now I have number one at TDC. So when I put the distributor in, I will be pointing the rotor at number one. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do number seven here. Basically I'm just doing a little less than three quarters. Now this one here is acting like it's lost its torque. Uh, it turned on too easy. I'm taking it off. I think I found a piece of thread. Uh, something. I have a mismatch of lock nuts on here. Uh, some of them have been replaced. I found generally that if there's just even a little bit of resistance, uh, these things will work and hold their adjustment. However, if, uh, oh boy, uh, if you can turn them on by hand, you want to replace that nut. Here, I think I have another situation where my stud is not looking so good. Yeah, well, I can't even get the rocker arm off that stud. Hmm, what to do about that? that. What shall I do about that? Okay. This might require some Mickey Mouse action. Yeah, I better turn the camera off for this one. Okay, here's my attempt at my redneck repair here. Alright, if we look Okay, look at the threads on that nut, on that rocker arm. Here's the one we're having trouble with. You can see that some threads are tore up on the top of the stud here. Well, these nuts crimp from the top. So I took this over on the garage floor, took a big hammer, and I smashed it on the side a couple times. So we're going to try and see if... If we can get it to crimp down on those lower threads that are still intact. So now we'll have to put the ratchet on it and see if it'll see how it feels. Yeah. Hmm. Oops. Actually, that started to feel a little on the tight side there. Now it's digging into those lower threads. Yes, it is tighter. It is tighter. Indeed it is. This may work. This just may work. Okay, I also noticed that the one right next to it is showing some wear too. Uh, they both happen to be right in the center of the motor, exhaust valves, whatever that may mean. but. I'm going to go ahead and get this one down to zero lash. There we go. One, two, three. Feels nice and firm. I'm going to leave it like that. Now this would be a good time for someone to chime in with a comment on an alternative fix. Uh, perhaps like removing and replacing a stud when it's on the engine like this. Okay. Okay. We were starting to lose our light. I had to break away and go, uh, had to go DEQ and get tags for the C28 over there. That car's been featured in another vid. I did the 4060E transmission in that car. So, and had to go up and pick up the oil. I've got the break in oil all poured in there now. And getting ready to bolt on an intake, I suppose. Get the front of it together. And I, there's my tools. I work out of one toolbox. And uh, for anyone who's been following the uh, my old vids of the Flying Dutchman, there is where it's at right now. A major disassembly and a reassembly taking place here. So I've got a ways to go yet. I have to get it together and get it painted.
Okay, well, as the okay, day well, fades into night, let's go over to do next. what I need to get number one line done here. We know the number one is back TDC on now, and so uh, the rotor has to point basically at each corner. Just pass number one. We're going about 20 degrees silicone. Of so and I've got the rubber gaskets cool which I saved. This. Now some guys will just put a bead of silicone there like that. On some manifolds, that's the uh, rubber gaskets just don't work well. Certain, uh, right. certain engines that have been decked and shaved and this and that. Sometimes they don't fit so good. But in this one, to get this. I rubber ends pointing. Right right I don't here. put any sealer on them. Right about in just here. the corners, and then around the water passages. There's four of them. That's this two to stay glued there. together. So it's just this side I put around the water passages as well. There's Set water it down. So we're using the intake manifold gaskets. It may seem redneck to some, but actually talk to talk to any racer out in the area there who's uh, worth a damn, and you'll find that uh, we reuse these a lot. So I'm not too concerned about that. So I put all the bolts in, tightening from the center out, just like on a cylinder head, working them down from the center out. I use my hand. About 30, 35 pounds of torque is what we put on these. Gaskets are not new, so retorquing is not such a big deal either. All right. All I right. just fell down in, lined up with so, the uh, oil pump drive shaft and the camshaft here, allowing the things to hook to up fall here. All the way uh, down. We have to tackle the front. That's another I, uh, challenge. There's a way to walk this right on around, tooth by tooth. Yeah. yeah see, I'm gradually tooth by tooth walking it this way. That's almost there. Actually, that I think I might use this. This looks like it might work. There's number one. There's the rotor. It looks like we may have it. That's good. So we can put. Well, I don't see the distributor clamp pulled down here. Only big problem is uh, when these things break, you're dead. Usually they don't give you much warning. So, guess what's in the back of the van? I got a points distributor and a conventional coil sitting back there. Sometimes I've even had extra parts like uh, the uh, control unit and a few things. Coil, which mounts in the distributor. I don't know what's back there now. It's been years. Okay. But essentially, that'll fit on there like so. That's it. Smartphone made a noise. Okay, I got busy on this valve cover to try to uh, control that leak. So, one of the tricks we do is each one of these holes, lay it this along a flat edge here, take a ball pin and hammer these holes down because they get stretched in and that'll help. Also, uh, I took some pliers and did some straightening and leveled out, leveled some things out here, so hopefully that'll work. Now, here's what I meant by a rigid valve cover gasket. This is a Moroso unit. It's a competition unit, but look how rigid, rigid that thing is. It's not going to shrink on you. I'm going to put this on without any sealer and uh, give her a try. I can't remember which way it went. It was on. I'm just going to slap it on there. Not too hard to line it up. Okay, I plane flat, ran out of the light. So we have another day we're working on this, and I'll admit it is getting tiresome. Now, when they talk about cam walk, I thought I might want to take a look at this. Right there, you can see where the bolts have come up against this cover. And that's the cam coming forward. Now, also, I'm working on this. This is the seal I'm going to reuse. I'm going to glue it in real good. I thought, what with this being, uh, having taken a set like this, 
that uh, I would be able to get it onto the engine, the front of the engine, fairly easily. But no, this part is really hard, and it's hard now too. So anyway, I'm going to re-glue this thing, and I've loosened up the first three bolts on the uh, oil pan, so I can get in there and pry it down a little bit, and hopefully get this thing to slip onto the pins. But uh, I want to get this uh, glued on real good. This is a place that can be a leak problem. When you're doing this job, it's, these things are designed to be put together when the oil pan is off the engine, when you're assembling it. Now there is a new, this is old school of course, but there is uh, a new kind of timing cover that's two piece and a different kind of gasket where it allows you to put everything in and then easily put the cover on and uh, that's something to consider. So, I'm also going to do this outside edge right here. Okay this is flashed off a bit so I'm going to see if I can get this on and try to get some leverage on it. Okay, got all my bolts on. I torqued them down. In my case, I'm using a little quarter drive with a, with an 11 socket actually. The clearances are kind of tight on some of these against this chrome uh, timing cover here. And I got my little timing pointer. And uh, this is the cheap stuff, but it's lasted through the years. It may be cheap, but it lasts. So now I've got to tighten the bolts underneath the pan again. Now I notice that they're not all that tight, so before I'm done here, I'm going to be underneath this thing, checking all the other pan bolts as well. Okay. So we get... Alright, pan bolts and timing bolts have been tightened. It's time for this harmonic balancer here. Now, you can see the wear marks from the seal on here. Fortunately this seal is not leaking yet. Uh, however there is a kit that you can get a sleeve that slides over this with a corresponding seal that a lot of people find they need to use. And this may be uh, coming due for this. One of these days, hopefully not soon. So I lube this both inside and out for the seal and for it to slide over that crank snout. It's a very big deal. And it was a fun interview. It, you know, it just kind of reassures the fact that when you talk to the big we'll stars, simply place over the, the keyway, players, they're generally people tap it that off. got there because they were just following their passions. And you find out that they're just real people. They're just real people. They don't have the big ego. They're just great people. So I, I love it. I'm hoping to copy it, <laughs> but I love it. I think you're going to enjoy it very much. So here we go, Scooter Brother. And now, the Muscle Car Place presents our interview of the week. Each week, a new and different person of interest or fame from the Muscle Car World will be featured in a one-on-one -on -one interview to share with the rest of the world. If you'd like to suggest... Okay, next I had to work on getting this fuel pump back in, which I'm about to do. The, as you recall, the fuel rod actuating rod had slipped down in here and there's an extra plate you can take off with the gasket and it allows you to get your finger down there and you can push it back up into place. Or you can reach down in here and fish around like I did. I took uh, some uh, a rag and wiped it off so it was as dry as I could get it, got my finger in there and some tools and I was able to get get a hold of that rod and push it up. And then screw this long bolt in to hold it up in place after taking out the bolt that, that was uh, glued in there. So. I screwed this in until it stopped and then I pulled the screwdriver out that was holding it up and, and it promptly fell right down. Why? Because I didn't have this far enough in. So I was able to get it back up again, held it with my fingers and kept screwing it until I knew I had this thing held up. So now the rod's up in place. I got the gasket on the fuel pump and I'm going to put it in. Generally what we do is uh, we get it in there make sure that it's under the push rod when we shove it up in there. And uh, 
and then we've got to get one bolt hole lined up. 